Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and here are 10 mods to get your motorcycle off-road ready. You should know right away that this is an accessible list. Now, my choices cost between free and a couple hundred bucks, and all of them can be installed by a half-drunk amateur mechanic. Why? Because a lot of us are crappier with wrenches than we care to admit. Also, we're not that motivated to hit the garage unless there's beer involved. And who really has the money for suspension rehauls and tailor-made spoked wheels anyway? I mean, at that point, just buy a different motorcycle. So, simple off-road mod number one, knobby tires. I've made entire videos on the subject linked down below. And long story short, the bumpier the tire, the better it is on dirt. The smoother the tire, the better it is on pavement. Now, of course, there are loads of subtleties that I'm not going to repeat here, but I'm happy to repeat them down there. A dirt tire is the single best thing you can do for making your bike handle off-road. Give me a gold wing on knobbies and I'll take it to the dunes. But with great power comes great liability. I mean, a knobby tire might get you to that epic rock garden or mud bog, but what happens when you drop the bike? Nothing, as long as you have engine bars. And these protect your casing, your fairing, your tank. In a perfect world, the engine bar will hit the ground before anything else. Dropping your bike on its side is the most common oops-a-daisy, by the way, as these scratches can attest. For what it's worth, my engine bars came from Suzuki, but I kinda wish they hadn't. And they're far too low to adequately protect my fairing, and the things weigh like they're cast in iron. And better options come from Puge and SW Motec. Next is a skid plate, the protective feature that will see the second most amount of action after your engine bars. See? And this is what the bottom of my engine casing would look like if it weren't for this skid plate. Now I'm pretty sure that my V-Strom has two millimeters of ground clearance. If you're planning to take a road-oriented bike off-road, you'll end up feeling the same way. So be prepared to get hung up on things very often. Which is more fun than it looks, actually, so long as you're not grinding away your engine every time you grind to a halt. My skid plate also takes a few shots from the front tire, which hurls pebbles backwards at a speed proportional to my right wrist. Was it more danger from that, however, is the radiator. And one sharp rock gets chucked through here, and this bike is overheating faster than a Canadian in Kuwait. That's why I've installed a steel radiator guard to replace Suzuki's dinky plastic one. Oh, this comes from Ravetech, by the way. Same as my skid plate. Ravetech makes accessories for a few Suzuki's, Yamaha's, Kawasaki's, and Ducati's, and their stuff comes from Thailand, and shipping runs on the geological timescale, but it's worth the wait. I mean, it's great quality, great customer service, super low prices, and fitment is dead on and dead easy to install. The only downside I notice is that the hardware, the screws, and the bolts, they're all a little bit soft. Mod number five, and our last protective mod, is a pair of handguards. Your bike might already have something that looks like this, but does it have this piece? Because you'll need a decent bar if you're planning to go jousting with the forest. Of course, bashing through the trees knuckles first is sexy, and if we're being honest with ourselves, not that common. And more likely, these are gonna save you from snapping a clutch or brake lever when you drop your bike for the millionth time. I should mention that there is a dark side to these things. I mean, everybody has a friend of a friend who saw a buddy go over the handlebars only to get his arm caught between bar and bark buster, and therefore coming out the other side with two broken wrists. Personally, I think that's a fluky crash and I've never ever seen it happen. And meanwhile, my handguards have saved my own fingers and my own levers more times than I can count. Wrist breakers or not, I'm keeping them. Half time, five mods down, five to go. And now we're transitioning away from that boring protection stuff and into some cool little tricks that'll turn you into a dirt god. Like foot pegs. Aftermarket pegs are invariably wider than the ones you got from the factory, providing more stable surface for standing up. The other thing is this removable insert. I still have soft rubber for killing the highway vibrations, but I can also have a serrated metal claw for riding off-road. Clawed metal won't get slippery in the mud, nor will it cake up in the dirt. And when you're controlling your bike by pushing your weight around your foot pegs in that standing position, it's a huge benefit. And huge rhymes with Puge, who is the maker of this adventure foot peg. 150 for a set, bike-specific adapter sold separately. Now tell me that wasn't a seamless product transition. And speaking of seamless transitions, if you're gonna be standing up on your nice new foot pegs, then you should also look at some bar risers. Odds are your handlebars are a little bit low for the standing riding position. Almost every OEM setup is, so when you ride like this for a while, you're gonna get shoulder, neck, and back pain from having to hunch over to reach your grips. Bar risers will lift your handlebars comfortably within reach, and they're a pretty cheap fix too. I mean, there's no complex installation, no need to change your handlebar, usually no need to extend your cables either. Just put this bit where the bar used to be, and move your handlebar up into here, and that's job done. It's the motorcycle equivalent of sitting on a phone book. Now, some of the more deep pocketed adventure riders will tell you to install a high rise handlebar rather than simply using risers, since that also lets you move into aluminum and away from the factory steel on your bike. See, aluminum has a nifty elastic quality. For a given hit that might bend a steel bar, 
an aluminum one can spring back into shape. Anyway, upgrading your bars is good advice so long as you can afford it. Otherwise, I would just go with bar risers and only replace your handlebars if or when you bend them beyond repair. Number eight, and our last mod that costs any money, is the SW Motec side stand foot. Over 60 bucks for this little thing, and that is officially grand theft in most US states, but at least it does prevent your side stand from sinking when you park on soft terrain. Simple premise, remove three screws, sandwich your existing side stand foot, and you've got more surface area for more staying power. Anyone who's seen my life hacks video will know that an old hotel keycard wedged underneath your side stand works just as well but it is annoying to dig through your wallet every time you have to take a trail side break. Now, let's wrap this video up with a couple freebie mods. For number nine, adjust your clutch and brake lever. You'll typically want these angled a little bit lower down for off-roading. That makes it easier to cover the levers while standing, since they'll complement the steeper angle of your arms. You also want to set a slightly shorter reach for off-roading. That makes it easier to precisely control the lever with just one or two fingers. On bumpy terrain, you'll want the rest of your digits, keeping their grip on your grips. And finally, mod 10 of 10 is a suspension adjustment. Here's the preload knob on my rear shock. Now how I adjust this mainly depends on whether or not I'm carrying a tent and how many donuts I ate for breakfast. Clockwise increases preload for fatter Ryan and counterclockwise decreases preload for skinnier Ryan. Now this is the damping screw, which is more directly relevant to off-roading. Bumpier surfaces like softer damping, while concrete surfaces prefer harder damping. However, damping does need to be tempered by the preload adjustment that I already made, because if I've jacked up my preload to account for the time I spent at Timmy's, and I also need to err on the firmer side of damping. The same goes for my riding style. See, I tend to spend a lot of time airborne, so I always set my compression damping a little bit higher or stiffer, just so my suspension doesn't bottom out. Obviously, this subject is subjective to each ride, rider, and riding style, but those are the basic ideas for getting started. And that's how I mod my motorcycle for off-roading. Thanks for watching.